aspect of mirroring, I want to complete one other aspect of mathematics. Yeah, no problem. Multiplication series are all mirrors. On that symbol, the 1 and 8 are the same geometric shape and the same distance from 9. To, to point out the, the mirror property of numbers, multiples of 1 ascend units of 1. It's the distance from 9 of 1. The mirror of that would be the multiples of 8, which is, again, the opposite direction, 1 from 9. Hmm. And multiples of 8, if it's a mirror of the number 1, must descend units of 1. So 1, 8 equals 8. 2 times 8 equals 16, which equals 7. Right. 8 minus 1 is 7. 7 minus 1 is going to be 6. And, of course, 3 times 8 is 24 is 6. 4 times 8 is 32 equals 5. 8 times 5 is 40 is 4. <laughs> 48 is 12 is 3. 56 is 11 is 2. 64 is 10 is 1. 72 is 9. It's just descended 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 9. Right. One, one digit at a time. One digit at a time. Mm -hmm. There is an inherent phasing, okay, or a harmonic perfection mirroring between 1 and 8. Now, what if we went between... Uh, 2 and 7. Yeah, 2 and 7. Wow. Same, th same thing, huh? 2, 4, 6, 8, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. I got that from 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 is 2, 4, 6, 8, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. The last number before 9 was 7. The opposite mirror of 2 is 7. I call them polar number mates because they equal 9. Whatever equals 9 is going to be a mirror. Ah, it'll be on the opposite side of the image. Exactly. Yeah. Right, right, okay. Of the axis. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which is, this is the secret of the axis. And multiples of 7. 7, 14, 21, 28, which is 7, 5, 3, 1. Then 35 is 8. It's just going to be seven, five, three, one, eight, six, four, two, nine. All right. Sending multiples of two. Yeah, it's amazing. So this jigsaw puzzle, this mosaic of phasing and harmonics, no one ever assembled the, the all the numbers together. And the torus on my website has different axes. Every axis, X, Y, and Z, is a different multiplication series intersecting. The reason Russell Blake said that I had the most advanced, he said I had six different axes intersecting any one number at any given instance, right. is because I discovered that all multiplication series are literally the underpinning geometry of the universe. That they literally are making, uh, um, uh, that using multiplication series you can see the invisible Z axis of spirit that creates the universe in the form of a donut. Amazing. So I just wanted to, to thank you for allowing me. Of course, four and five would have been mirrors, too. But this is all a, a language. It is all a relationship that nobody ever took to the ad infinitum, you know, effort that I was able to put into it to get it to understand what the final geometric shape was. Because that mathematical fingerprint of God is nothing more than a legend. It's like in the most amount of information in the universe encrypted into the smallest amount of space. You know, um, Marco, there's something else. There's a word uh, that's called, I think you call it Enneagram or Enneagram, E-N-N-E-A-G-R-A-M. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously this has to do with the number nine. But there's, there's also in, uh, you know, some mystical traditions, this idea of uh, nine entities or beings or something that, that that go by the name of the Ennead. And I've had an opportunity in the past to, to, to research that a little bit, and it makes a whole lot more sense to me now. I mean, it's it's more simple than than anything, quite honestly. I mean, everything unfolds from those nine numbers. Um, I once um, did a work, and it's not well explained, but it is up on my website. Um, I take the numbers off the torus counter diagonal to the doubling circuits, uh -huh. um, which make a repeating pattern. I can't remember it off the top of my head, um, but it's nine, I think two and seven are on the right and left of it. Um, and you put those in a circle, and you connect the one, the two, to the four, to the eight, mm -hmm. and you make the integram. <laughs> And so, so there are just... Uh, there are all the same, ev but different perspectives. And every pattern that you can imagine. And different in involutions of one another. But everything converges in, 
and and takes on a, is different perspectives or different relationships of a Tory. Huh, amazing. All right, so um, I think we'll not take a break. Let's just keep going and uh, let's talk about. Uh, okay, back to the uh, the coil itself and the geometry and this idea of vortices and. Uh, what do we call them? Underlying... Underpinning nested vortices. Underpinning nested vortices. And, and how does that pan out in the real world, and why is that so important? Everything is controlled in biology, in, in um, all um, engineering and, me- and mechanics, by underpinning nested vortices. Uh, when I was a kid, we grew up, we played golf, and the, all the golf balls were solid. I don't, a lot of people may not remember that. But there was no dimples. Hmm. based on tetrahedrons in different shapes, <laughs> okay? Yeah. And then somebody discovered that the, the lift and flight properties of a golf ball were affected by the dimples. Mm-hmm. The dimples are, uh, are not well understood today as it applies to biology or to anything else. Um, I know there was, I think there were the Willis brothers, they made surfboards in the North Shore here in Hawaii, mm-hmm. Um, they call them phaser surfboards because they would put dimples on the bottom of them. Mm-hmm. But they're, they lost, they're, they're considered, by, not most surfers like them because they're way too fast. <laughs> they may, they don't, they're not able to grip and feel the wave. It makes the wave very slippery. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, I discovered with electricity that it is necessary for it, it creates in relationship to the magnetism the same type of underpinning nested vortices. And using this mathematics, I discovered that for a toroid coil to respirate its 